Dr. Fizz here with Tensors. We're going to start with the scalar. A scalar has no direction, it's just simply a magnitude, and a nice example of that is temperature. Here we have the temperature values at different places of the United States at a given point in time. And you can think of the temperature as a function of x, y, and z, and also time. So this value for temperature though has no direction it is simply a magnitude 39 uh, degrees Fahrenheit or you can use the Celsius scale you have one number to describe the temperature and here they have a color code where the warmer temperatures uh, are yellow or orange and the colder ones here tend to be these bluer bluer ones so here we look at the tensor of rank zero. That's called a tensor of rank zero. And the tensor of rank one is our vector. And our vector has the magnitude and direction. And wind would be an example of that, where you have little arrows here with different lengths showing you the wind velocity, which gives you its magnitude, its speed, and in which direction the wind is blowing. That's a tensor of rank one, our vectors. And another example would be our electric field vector here, which we'll study later in our course, where we have a charge plus charge and we have a vector field, the force field getting weaker and weaker as you get farther and farther from the source. And it points away, which means if you have a test particle that's plus, it would move away in all the radial directions with respect to the plus charge at the center. A tensor of rank two can be thought of as one that it needs say three vectors at each of the surfaces where you have a nine components total stress is an example if you have a little block here you can have three forces at each of the surfaces one two and three surfaces here and the other three surfaces the other paired surfaces would have forces so that equilibrium would be established let's assume this is not moving so we would have opposite torques and opposite forces so here we're going to simply look at three of the surfaces and you have a force that pulls upward and two that pull shear forces sideways or this force could be negative and you know push in and compressing the cube so here we have three forces at each of the surfaces so we're going to call one of these surfaces the surface one, which is defined by the E hat one pointing away from the surface. That would be a way to define this little surface as the unit vector that points outward from it. And this is unit vector pointing along the second axis, the Y axis, and a unit vector along the Z axis. So each of these three vector orientations for the three faces of this cube, each has there are three vectors, one along the normal direction and a component perpendicular and another component perpendicular. And so you can think of this as one, one. This is the first surface and this force is in the one direction. This is one, two, the first surface defined by the E one hat. And it's the second force we're looking at the Y direction. And here is one, three. So that means we have nine components when we do that to the others. We have the one, one, the one, two, the one, three. And then here we have the sigma, two, one, two, two, and two, three for this surface here. See two, two points along the Y. It's the Y force along the direction of the Y face. So that would be this one in the middle. But then you could have here the second face here has a force, a shear force, sideways force, pushing it here or pulling it along the x direction. The first one, so that's two, one. And you have the nine components. And that would be an example of a tensor of rank two. So here's a little summary. A tensor of rank zero has just one parameter. I can use these matrix form to describe these. And here's kind of redundant or silly to do that because it's just one component there, just the temperature. Here I have a column matrix one two three components and here i have the tensor of rank two which is two by a th a three by three where i have nine components so here one component three components and nine components tensor of rank zero tensor of rank one tensor of rank two and for two dimensions 
we would have the scalar being the same, but the column vector only have two components in two dimensions, and your two uh, dimensions in a two by two form for the tensor of rank two would simply have four components there. Now, not all matrices are tensors. Tensors do have transformation properties, but if you're using vector components as in the stress analysis to analyze something, you're on pretty good grounds that you're gonna be dealing with a tensor. So in general, you can have a tensor of rank N in M dimensions. See, in that case, you would have M dimensions. This would be a column matrix with M components. This would be M components this way, M components that way. And that would be for your tensor of rank two. Your tensor of rank three would mean you'd have to have 27 components. If you have the three by three, you'd have to have a three dimensional an array there. And with then four and five and six, it could be, well, impossible to, to visualize. But anyway, these are the more common ones here, thinking of the three dimensions uh, where you have this tensor of rank zero, one component, and your tensor of rank one, three components, tensor of rank two, the nine components as represented in that matrix.